latest trend, ditching your PC case and going caseless. Is it worth it? Is it for you? I don't know. Let's find out. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Have you been looking at your favorite YouTuber and you're wondering, well, how come they're running a caseless computer? Maybe this is the hottest new trend. Maybe everybody's doing it and you're missing out because you've got your computer sitting in this fancy, really cool looking case, which I actually really like, but maybe there's something to it, right? Let's dig into the pros and cons of running a caseless setup so that you can make the best decision for yourself and you know, you might make a little bit of money selling your old useless case before anyone else catches on to this hot new trend. So first off, let's talk about why you might want to consider going caseless. One of the pros is it provides better cooling. After all, this case is enclosed. I've got a lot of fans in here trying to pull as much cool air in as possible, bring it through all of my components and then get rid of it so that I can keep that healthy flow of cool air. But if there was no case, I could eliminate all of those fans and just have a really neat, cool little setup that saves me a lot of money and stays nice and cool as well. And it does this by exposing all of those components to more open air. There's just no case to stop that airflow from going over your cooler for your CPU, going over your RAM and keeping it nice and cool. This extra circulation can help heat dissipate faster from the CPU and the GPU, which would reduce thermal throttling during intense gaming or heavy workloads. Now note, this does assume that your case has poor airflow as it is. For example, in my case, I've done a ton of testing to make sure that I am not suffering from thermal throttling, and I've even done a different video that shows you how to check if your computer is suffering from the same. So if you're not sure, you can go ahead and check that out. If you are suffering from thermal throttling, going caseless is absolutely an inexpensive way to solve that problem. Another pro for going caseless, it is so much easier to access the components on your computer. So for example, if I wanted to go and swap the RAM around, I wanted to swap out the GPU, I wanted to make any changes, you can see I got that cool little truck sitting on top of my GPU. If I wanted to swap that out, it'd be so much easier if it wasn't stuck inside of a case. So obviously it's so much more accessible for swapping components. One of the pros we've already alluded to it is the cost savings. First of all, you don't need to buy a case if you're going caseless, but we've also talked about all of the fans and the cooling needed to keep the air moving through that case. Well, if you don't have a case, you don't need to spend all that money. So you can actually save quite a few hundred dollars on your PC build if you decide to just go caseless from the start. Now with all of these upsides of going caseless, surely there's gotta be some downsides and there are. So we might as well cover those now. The first con is aesthetics. I mean, we all agree that this case is pretty sweet looking. It looks cool. Now, if you've got raw components all hanging out, it's really hard to hold all of your fancy RGB lights that light it up and make it look really neat. So it can become a bit messy, especially cable management. You've got nowhere to hide it. And it's just an exposed computer sitting on your desk. Second con is physical vulnerability. Obviously, a case provides protection for those components. Without that protection, they're totally exposed. You're sitting there, midnight gaming session, you've got your favorite bottle of Orange Crush on the desk beside you, you get a little excited, boom, the crush gets knocked over. Suddenly, your $1,000 gaming rig is reduced to nothing as the sticky mess starts to evaporate all over those electrical components and the computer shuts down. If you have a case, that might not happen to you, Without a case, you're definitely exposing yourself to that risk. If you have pets or small children, or just people who don't understand electronics, you also can't keep their sticky little fingers out of your components like you can with a case. One of the bigger problems with going caseless is the 
enemy of all electronics and that is dust. You do not want to get dust buildup inside your PC, especially on your components. Dust can cause all kinds of issues with more heat being produced and potentially short circuiting or frying your components. Having a properly ventilated case can absolutely keep the dust out. It makes cleaning a whole lot easier. Whereas going caseless, all the dust that settles on your desk is also going to settle on that PC. And something that you might not have considered is vibration damage. Cases often have vibration dampers built into them for spinning hard drives, which are mostly a thing of the past with SSDs, which is one way to mitigate the concerns of going caseless by switching to non-moving components. Keep in mind you still do have fans for your cooling on your GPU and your CPU and they're not going to have the vibrations dampened which will carry through to the desk and onto other components of your build. Now if through all of those pros and cons you decide going caseless is the answer for me, there are a few ways to minimize those risks that we talked about by ditching that case. First off, you could use a drawer or a pull-out shelf to hold your case. Having it in a dedicated drawer or cabinet helps reduce exposure while keeping that easy access. You could also have very strict rules about liquids on the desk on or around that caseless PC. So that orange soda, you're gonna wanna put it on the other side of the desk. Now we already talked about switching to SSDs to replace those vulnerable hard drives that have spinning mechanisms inside that would be susceptible to damage from the vibrations caused by not having those dampers. And the big one, that dust. A couple cans of compressed air and a regular routine of blowing that out will surely solve the dust problem. It's really easy, especially since the whole computer is fully exposed. It's as simple as powering it down, blasting it with air, and you're good to go for another week or two. Now the harder question is, is going caseless really right for you? And there's a couple questions you can ask to help make this decision a little bit easier. First off, do you experience thermal issues with your current case? Again, the easy answer would be just go caseless, thermal issues mostly go away. Don't forget, you can check that other video where we tell you how to check if you're having thermal issues on your computer so you can make sure that it's tied to heat and not tied to something else. It could be a general performance issue that has nothing to do with heat. And in that case, a proper thoughtful upgrade might be the better choice rather than going caseless. And lucky for you, we do have a different video that talks about how to spot what upgrade is needed next for your computer. Something else to ask is, are you frequently upgrading or testing different computer parts? This is where you probably had your opinion swayed. See, many of us watch our favorite YouTubers and our favorite reviewers, and the one thing we notice is they have a caseless setup and they're swapping RAM out, they're swapping GPUs out, they're swapping components like it's the end of the world. But many of us are not YouTubers. Many of us are not swapping components and we don't need that easy access. If you are one of those people who just like to tinker, like to swap, like to play with stuff, well then caseless might be for you. But for many of us, we can lock it up inside that case and never touch it again or not for a long time and we'd be quite okay. We also need to consider, are you prepared for more maintenance and care? We talked about how dusty it's gonna get. We talked about your cat jumping on there when you're not paying attention to it and it just takes more mindfulness and more patience and more just time. If you answered yes to many or all or some of those, then caseless might be the answer for you. Only you know what's best for you. But odds are many of us like a set it and forget it system. I built that PC a while ago. I've swapped the case recently and I haven't touched it since. That's because I'm not due for an upgrade because I checked that video about what upgrades do you need and I found out that my PC is working exactly as I need it to and nothing is being stressed anymore than is expected, so I don't need to touch that computer. And many of us are like that. You build it once, you use it for a few years before you ever need to touch it. So besides it looking pretty cool, it's not gonna serve you a whole lot of different purpose and the, the money savings isn't gonna be realized because I mean, I've already got the case. So careful consideration can help you decide what's best for you and I wanna know. After watching this video, now you understand the pros and the cons. What are you gonna do? Are you ditching your case or are you sticking with the case can. Post in the comments down below. Let me know. I read all the comments. I love to have a chat. And don't forget, if you want to check out some cool new upgrades, I'll put links in the description for some of the stuff that I'm running in the background here, just in case 
you might be ready for that next step or a new upgrade on that PC. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.